Electricity bills. We all get them, but do we know what we're paying for? Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'm the Manager of Communications and Customer Service at Yukon Energy. I'm here today to talk about the different components of electricity bills and to speak about how rates are designed and implemented across the Yukon. There are three different customer groups in the Yukon. Residential, general service, also known as business and commercial customers, and industrial customers. The key thing to note here is that each different customer group pays a different electricity rate. There are also two different account types when it comes to electricity in Yukon. There are government accounts and non-government accounts. This applies specifically to residential customers and general service customers. The key thing to note here is that government accounts pay more for electricity than their counterparts. When it comes to rate design in the Yukon, there are three key things to note. The first is, in the Yukon, we have what is called postage stamp rates. That means that customers in the same rate class pay the same rate regardless of where they live, with a small variation for high electricity users in Old Crow. So that means if you're a residential customer in Whitehorse or in Dawson City, Watson Lake, or any of the other communities, you're paying the same for electricity per kilowatt hour. There are two electric utilities in the Yukon, Yukon Energy and ATCO, and both of their charges appear on all customer bills. This is specifically important when it comes to rate increases. Whether it's Yukon Energy or ATCO who have a rate increase approved by the Yukon Utilities Board, that rate increase is applied to all customer bills across the territory. The second thing to note about rate design is that the energy charge line item on bills is based on rates that are approved by the Yukon Utilities Board in 2011. All rate increases for Yukon Energy and ACO Electric since that time are added to customer bills as separate line items known as riders. The third thing to note is that the energy charge on customer bills is tiered, which simply means the more you use the more you pay per kilowatt hour. The easiest way to show this is through an example on the screen. Let's say that the arrow is a residential non-government customer's electricity usage during a month. There are three tiers when it comes to residential non-government accounts. Zero to a thousand, a thousand to twenty-five hundred, and twenty-five hundred plus. Electricity consumed in each of these different tiers is charged a different rate per kilowatt hour. Now let's take for example a customer who uses 1500 kilowatt hours during a billing cycle. For the first 1000 kilowatt hours, they'll be charged 12.14 cents per kilowatt hour. For the remaining 500 kilowatt hours, they'll be charged 12.82 cents per kilowatt hour. The end result is their energy charge for 1,500 kilowatt hours of electricity usage. Let's show some sample bills now. There are four main sections in electricity bills. The account summary, account details, consumption history, and billing details. I'll now walk through each of these four sections. Let's start with the account summary. This is the top and bottom third of the electricity bill that you would receive each month. On it, you'll see the name of the utility that delivers power to your home or business. For the majority of customers in the Yukon, this will be Aco Electric Yukon. However, in some communities in the territory, Yukon Energy also delivers power to homes and businesses. You'll also notice the phone number of that power company. This is the number that you would call if you'd like to make a bill payment or to have questions answered about your bill. Next is the customer statement account number. This is the number that you would provide the customer service reps at Aqua Electric Yukon or Yukon Energy when you called the office to ask questions about your bill. Lastly, you would see the amount that's due and the due date. Next is the account details section of the bill. Here, you'll notice the customer rate and cycle now, there are 20 billing cycles here in the Yukon. So in this example, cycle 10 means that this customer's meter is read approximately halfway through each month. Next, you'll notice the billing period. 
These are the dates in which the bill is for, in this example, February 10th to March 9th. The bill will also show the number of calendar days between this time period. Now this is an important part because meter reads can happen on a customer's account anywhere between 28 to 35 days. So if you get a bill that seems to be a little bit higher than previous months, this is likely the first place you want to look. Are you being charged for energy used over 33 to 35 days compared to maybe 28? Next is the energy used. This is the part of the bill that shows how much energy you're being charged for during that billing cycle. Next is the energy consumption chart. This is the chart that appears in the middle of your bill on the left hand side. It provides customers with a snapshot of their energy usage per month for the year. It also shows the type of meter read and how it was obtained. Black lines indicate an actual meter read. This means an Aqualectric Yukon or Yukon Energy employee visited your home or business and took a physical reading of the meter. A white bar shows an estimated meter read. Estimated meter reads can happen for a couple of reasons. Primarily, if weather conditions prevent a utility employee from visiting your home or business, or if there was an obstruction that prevented the employee from gaining access to your meter. The last section of the bill is the billing details, and this is the most complicated part of the bill. What we see on the screen is an example of what typical residential non-government customers would see in the middle section of their bill. This section is divided into three key parts. The first being the previous balance and payments made on the account. The second section being the current charges. Now I'll step through each of these line items individually. The first is the customer charge. This is a charge applied to all residential accounts in the Yukon. It's a fixed charge of $14.65 each month and covers some of the costs of generating and delivering electricity across the territory. The next is the energy charge. This is the same energy charge that we spoke about previously. There are three things to note about the energy charge. First, it's 100% variable and directly related to how much electricity you use during that billing cycle. Second, it's based on utility rates that were approved by the Yukon Utilities Board in 2011. And three, they're tiered, just like we showed in the previous example. The next section is the riders. These are the additional line items on the bill. The first rider is the fuel adjustment rider, also known as Rider F. The majority of electricity generated in the Yukon is produced using hydro resources. A small amount of liquefied natural gas and diesel is also used to generate electricity in emergency situations when hydro resources aren't available and diesel is used to generate electricity in five communities that are not connected to the grid. Customers pay what Yukon Energy and Aqua Electric Yukon pay for LNG and diesel. This rider is meant to recover the true cost of fuel from customers. Next is the YECL rate adjustment rider. This is also known as the Aqua Electric Yukon rate increases that have occurred and been approved by the Yukon Utilities Board since 2011. The next is the Yukon Energy Revenue Shortfall Rider, which reflects the rate increases that have been approved for Yukon Energy since 2011. The YEC 2017 and 18 GRA TrueUp is a temporary rider that is scheduled to come off electricity bills on November 30th, 2021. It reflects the result of the regulatory delays in Yukon Energy receiving the decision about its 2018 rate increase. The last rider is the Yukon Interim Electrical Rebate, and this is actually a credit to residential non-government accounts. This interim electrical rebate is provided to customers from the Yukon Development Corporation and is meant to offset the costs of the result of the Faro mine coming off the grid more than 20 years ago. When that large mine came off the grid, so did a large customer. Because of that, electricity costs were then had to be spread over a smaller number of people. To help reduce the burden, Yukon Development Corporation has implemented this electrical rebate to residential non-government accounts. 
it's applied as a cents per kilowatt hour credit to customer bills up to a maximum of $23.95 each billing cycle. Next is the current billing, which is the sum of all the current charges and the amount due, which is the sum of the current billing plus any balance forward. Here's an example of what a bill for a general service customer would look like. As you can see, there are a number of similarities to the residential bill. What I'd like to point out and discuss are the items highlighted in red, which are the differences. There are two main differences. First, general service customers do not pay the fixed customer charge that residential customers do. Instead, they pay what is known as a demand charge. They pay for the right to have access to the capacity on the Yukon grid. There is a minimum demand charge of 5 kilowatts in the Yukon, but the demand that customers are charged is based on the demand they use between the months of October and March the year prior, or alternatively, a higher demand in all the other months. The other difference is general service customers do not receive the Yukon interim electrical rebate, which is specific for residential non-government accounts. Thanks for your time today. Along with this video, we have more information about customer bills and definitions about each of the line items on our website at yukonenergy.ca.